All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a new episode of the Ponder All podcast. I am overjoyed and filled with joy as I am joined by the host of the podcast that's so euphoric, Paige Blazer and Alex Miller. And uh, I'm not going to say I'm a little, I don't know, a little biased because they happen to be two of my best friends. We've been trying to, <laughs> been trying to do a podcast together, I don't know, Paige, for what, about a year when you started this thing? Oh, yeah. It's been a little over a year now. We've talked about it for a long time. Yeah. And finally, we are getting together on a Sunday night for everybody. Welcome to the Ponder All podcast, Paige and Alex. How are you both doing? Wow. What an intro. Thank you. I try. Thank you, Luis. We're doing great. And for a Sunday night, we're we're, we're pretty lit. We've got our gin and juice. (laughs) Are you drinking out of Moscow Mule, like the copper uh, cups? Yes, we are. We wanted to kind of not match. for any reason. Well, for aesthetics, we were like, "Oh, we'll uh, be yeah. recorded, so we want to look kind of professional." Yeah. While we also look fantastic. <laughs> By the way, I haven't put this show on YouTube yet. It's all recorded on Buzzsprout, but I'm going to launch um, the first five on YouTube soon. So you guys are, it's perfect. Bless oh, up! Yeah. I can't awesome. wait. So uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about your show, and then we'll just go into what you guys um, have to say about it. But basically, when you go to Spotify. That's so euphoric. Uh, Spotify has an awesome about section for podcasts. And yours is totally on brand for Paige and Alex. And it (laughs) says, bitch, we're your soulmates for all things euphoria. I'm your host, Paige Blazer. In this podcast, my boyfriend Alex and I will be your guides through the neon suburbia of Sam Levinson's hit show, Euphoria. So just real quick, unless you've been under a rock or like in a coma the past two and a half years euphoria is an awesome show on hbo max or hbo i guess max wasn't out then that stars zendaya and a host of other awesome young talent and some older talent and it basically is like a uh uh, i don't know like a a nightmarish (laughs) version of like someone who's about to have a 13 year old daughter next month Uh, it's like like a nightmarish (laughs) version but yet super on par realistic portrayal of what being a teen is nowadays is that how you would describe it yeah and I think yeah and just a story of someone who is going through issues with addiction and drug addiction specifically so you know it it all revolves around one character going through their drug addiction but then there's lots of side characters also like you said going through high school drama in a very nightmarish, crazy way, but it's also very realistic to like today. <laughs> yeah, Zendaya portrays Rue, who's going through those, uh, like you said, addiction, post addiction, um, kind of coming out of surviving an, o- an overdose. And like mm-hmm. the first episode, we're hit with all this heavy stuff, but also yeah. going to class and like trying to attend, attend our classes <laughs> and go to high school. It's like, it's so, it's so real, beyond real, but also kind of like, wow, like this is pretty heavy uh, material. So Paige, I remember during, so I want to talk about a couple of things. I want to talk about where this idea for your podcast, uh, it's a fan podcast for the show, but I remember when you talked to me about the idea, but also I want to talk about kind of your kind of nightmarish uh, experience being in New York, because you guys, you know, I met you at, we won't talk about where we previously worked or where I previously worked, but I'm so glad for that experience because I got to meet you both. And that was also kind of euphoric in, the, in a sense, in a weird way, because it was kind of like a dream, dream express. Sam, he's like having an attack in his sleep. He's so crazy. Sam, be quiet. But we got to hang out a lot and travel together to New York. And um, I know that New York was always a like goal of yours for the longest time. And then you and Alex through a bunch of like hurdles made that happen. Yeah. And literally... How many months after you guys made it happen did literally the world hit the fan? And four months. We had about four normal months. And then oh my God. Went to shit. And it was like holiday season. So in New York, don't get me wrong, that's amazing. But it's not like your normal day-to-day life. It's very glamorous. Oh. It's like over-the-top holiday-esque. So we weren't really like experiencing New York in terms of feeling like we were locals. We still felt a little bit like tourists because we were going to do all the Christmas and we just did holiday stuff. Yeah. We went to the parade and we went ice skating and like you know, <laughs> and from so from from the jumping point, um, kind of like me when I moved to Spokane, 
you got delayed on your apartment entrance. I got delayed by six yeah. weeks. Oh, yeah. We were you just got, talking about that like literally yesterday. You got oh, delayed my, by my. a month, yeah. Oh, so you make mom. you make all these plans, you get the transfer. Alex uh, at his job put in it two weeks, then found out we had a month until we could move. His job was so sweet. He had to embarrassingly go back to his work and be like, So about those two sure. weeks. Can I'm I get a month? Can I get in and push that two weeks out a month? And they said <laughs> yes. Thank God they were cool about it. They were like, Yeah, sure. We don't have anybody else yet. So pays to be a good employee, right? Yeah, yeah. but Damn. yeah. Absolutely not so. <laughs> but yes, we I had always wanted to move to New York since I was young. Alex, kind of same, like just always a place of interest. Like we both actually genuinely always wanted to end up in a big city and then whether it be out of the country or in the US and for the time being, we weren't quite ready to leave the country. So New York was the next best step for us. So yeah, like you said, we we fucking made it happen. It was, it was hard. It was not easy, but so, so worth it. I remember um, at the dinner that we had at my place, downtown Portland, with all of our friends, and we had big dinner on the rooftop, and everyone was so we were crying at the end, and I never would have imagined, because that seemed like the hurdle was over, like, hey, we did it, like, you're moving. Yeah. And then, then, the, adventure, <laughs> <laughs> then yeah. the adventure begins in March, so at what point did you have the idea to be like i have this idea for the show and i'm just gonna fucking do it learn about podcasting and just go for it well i mean i'll start you can yeah. chime in whatever <laughs> i so i it's interesting euphoria was not a show that i watched and immediately fell for i actually watched the pilot and was intrigued but was I was a little bit like this is a lot like I don't know if this is a show I want to like watch (laughs) I'm already like depressed living in Portland like it was heavy and Alex was actually a little more like "Ooh, this is like good I'm gonna keep watching it you don't have to if you don't want to and I was like well of course I'm going to if you are then we kind of flip-flopped I was like second episode just like this is my favorite show I've never seen anything like this I am like not just hooked like I am obsessed and I don't really get like that with a lot of stuff it's so rare that I become that enthralled with a tv show especially tv like film sure but tv shows not really so it's kind of unique in that sense so then fast forward you know we moved to New York we're bored of shit during covid (laughs) I was already actually before COVID, I I had said, I really think it'd be fun to do a podcast Mm -hmm. about euphoria. And Alex was kind of like, I mean, I would do it with you because I love you, but I'm not like as obsessed as you are, but it would be like a fun, creative thing to do. Um, So we kind of like bought the equipment, but then we're really lazy about it. We like totally procrastinated and we're like, oh, we'll do it one day. And another reason we wanted to do it was because we did our research and there was no podcast out at all about you. There was like one, there was like one that we found, but it was just kind of more of like a recap, not so much like a deep dive fan theory based. Yeah. And their episodes were like three hours long and they had, they had just stopped after like the first eight episodes. And we wanted to, it was interesting to like try to figure out how to balance like keeping our show about euphoria, but like running out of episodes because Mm -hmm. we kind of like, we did the first eight episodes. We did like a recap for each one where we watched it and discussed it. Amazing. And we had like some fun ideas for some other episodes. And then we got like, got to a weird point where we were like, okay, season two, like normally would be coming up and we could just carry this on. Mm -hmm. But then season two was delayed because of COVID. So we were just kind of like, well, like, what do we do now? Because we like didn't want to stray away from making it. Like, didn't want to stray away from it being a Euphoria themed podcast. Um, too yeah, much. that's a hard balance when your 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 show is based on a show, and your show is based on a show that has a normal cadence like any other yeah. production, especially fast paced production in like New York or an HBO production. They they're on a schedule. Page me and you have production background. We know how this works. Yeah. It's very busy. And then, it's, and then it's like oh nothing's happening now nothing like, literally nothing you know, and then <laughs> um, well and the, I always say this whenever we pitch our show to anyone it's also fun because Alex and I bring s- such a different perspective to the podcast I'm like the fangirl 
I'm, I have, I know all the background, meaning like I care about what the actors are doing daily, like in their real life and what they bring to the table in the show. Alex is more of like a, I don't know, you can describe how you are. You're unbiased. Like you're very like it's, objective about things. Yeah. Where, like I, I like euphoria, but I don't love euphoria. So I can be a little more critical. Um, and I am the other thing that I'd say like, that I bring is like, I'm very like research oriented. Mm -hmm. Euphoria has like a very like dense like mythology. Like the creators of that show put a lot of references, like a lot of cultural references in the show. And that like the music and certain scenes and like the way characters are dressed and the costumes and all this like stuff is all like very referential to like film and music and culture. And it all like builds on the story um yeah. so I get really into like researching that and like figuring out how everything ties together which is yeah. super cool because I you're like that too Louise I am not so I'm Alex will just bring that shit to the table during the podcast without like telling me prior and it's just fun because we just bounce off each other but yeah I'm very unbiased like no matter what anyone does on Euphoria I'm like I stand I love I don't care you're very biased <laughs> oh okay that makes me biased yeah <laughs> I just um well I, yes I will okay. always love everyone no matter what where Alex like you said is a lot more critical so it's just fun yeah. just banter you know I, I have two two a couple of things to say um I only got through episode three without like like soberly like watching it like I'm engrossed because episode two rocked me shook me in a in in a way I've never had a show get under my skin like that because um what is it jacobs what's the jacobs character's name see this is nate. How... Nate. nate nate i've known kids like that i've been super close friends with kids like that growing scary. up and it's very scary but also you kind of want to champion what he was trying to do in that episode too even though it was in a weird fucking really twisted way uh not champion what was he trying to do uh, when he was, uh, you know, putting. I'm like, what was Nate ever trying to do that was good? He's always doing well, some well, well, he was like, you know, um, had attacked the the guy that uh, oh, yeah. stuff with the underage yeah. girl. That not not anything else, just that one scene in particular. Let me make that very clear. Like, no, no, no. I was just laughing because I'm like, <laughs> what do we champion Nate for? <laughs> also, though, to be fair, since you it's... haven't watched it that well even that's not justified because no. the girl asked that guy I, I, yeah. there is consent with the guy he right and he up. doesn't think she's underage at the time it's just such a weird he's it's such a, like these um he's like the epitome of a narcissist and and narcissists are their own uh um what is it like uh commander like a commander in chief like judge jury and executioner and he was very much in that, but it came out of nowhere. It was like a blast of the face. Like, why is this kid acting like this? <laughs> I am so intrigued. And now I know who his dad is based on episode one, the hotel scene. And then he comes home at the end of that. So I was so intrigued that I was almost like, this is too much. This is like a lot. To I did not know that. So you've never watched all of season one? I didn't I've, know. I've watched, I've watched multiple episodes, but like in various states of, you know, boyfriend over you know inebriation things happening in the background but i haven't dedicated time like you guys have but i've yeah. like um vicariously like experienced the show through you like i watched the one special the the one we can get into that um mm -hmm. here in a little bit but i want to talk about um where the show is now the audience you've built and then the unbelievable experiences you've had like i mean you've had some people from the show some celebrities from the show call in uh, you had an amazing episode with Clark. Was it Clark Furlong? Is that his last name? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Who played um, Young Jules in in that yeah. episode as well? So, talk about that. What was that like? What was like? Where did you? What at what moment did you know? Like, oh wait a minute, people are giving a shit about this, and and how did that feel during all the work you put into it during all the chaotic stuff that's happening in the world too? Because not only were you guys experiencing COVID, but you were dealing with all the BLM protests in New York on yeah. top of all that it was a lot at the time like, <laughs> yeah. I'm looking back I'm like yeah, yeah it was a lot that's such a cute question because no one's ever like asked us this shit. <laughs> we're still like so small and we're growing but I'll say like for Alex and I we're so chill like I said like this was just a passion project so we didn't go into it with a goal of like we want followers or we want money for this it was like yeah that'd be fucking dope but like we don't think that's gonna happen 
so we did it and in terms of being surprised like oh fully shocked that even like 10 people would listen yeah and when we dropped our first episode i actually genuinely don't remember if we even had that many listens i think it grew over like i think over yeah. like three months though we did i remember it wasn't too long though like we had like 200 listens or something on like our first episode which for me that's insane like I don't yeah. even, like Alex and I joke like Alex doesn't have any social media so like for him to even have 200 people like care about what he has to say alone is like hilarious because it's not like we have big followings it's just yeah we just not uploaded yet. a project we care about and we yeah. marketed it as much as we could through Instagram mainly Instagram and Having the Instagram I think was helpful because it was like instant feedback on this because if you just make a podcast you don't really you can see like the numbers like you're like oh like this many yeah. people listened or whatever but you don't really get any kind of like personalized feedback um and Paige just took a job with the Instagram and built like such a community there so we had like that's she where did. we had like, the meaningful like interactions with people that really enjoy the show and where we could like ask questions and like source fan theories um, and just so get that their was, feedback like, super beneficial yeah and just be like is this totally boring as fuck or are you all like enjoying it and whenever they like all give you the thumbs up it's like yeah we're just gonna keep this going so weirdly Where's... i don't it didn't like take off though like i don't want to be like yeah. overnight we got all these like it definitely was like a two to three month yeah it was pretty quick though we were one yeah. thing we did that i would say is super beneficial if you're starting a podcast is to do like a regular release schedule because we like we were like okay we're gonna like confirm that we're gonna do one episode a week for the to, for the first like eight episodes mm-hmm. that we did um, and it was like a lot of work but sticking to that super regular schedule starting out was really beneficial got people super hooked <laughs> i remember you showed me something early on episode count or episode downloads I don't know how Spotify does. I know Buzzsprout will show you downloads, but Spotify might show you hits, but it was over 3,000. It was really yeah. on. I'm like, that's really impressive. And that was yeah. only a couple, it was like a day or two into the release of one of the episodes. And we owe that all to our, like the listeners. Like they're, like Alex said, they're like devoted as fuck. Like not even like, oh, it's us. Like they spread the word. They create the theories. They write into us. They like provide us content to talk about. So it's definitely really fun because like also we just built this community and now it's very like reciprocated and they give us ideas because like we run out of shit to talk about at a certain point yeah but then they write theories and like bring up like actually very valid points at times so it's a lot of fun but it makes it makes sense to make it about the fans because it is a fan-based show yeah Yeah, that's definitely what's unique another unique point about it is we definitely as you know like i even asked before we started recording i'm like can we be r-rated on this like please please our euphoria is extremely explicit so it only makes sense that our podcast is extremely explicit where i think like the only podcast that exists was very kind of just like alex said like recapped episodes ours is like we fully embrace the culture by quite literally partying and like every episode we pop a bottle of champagne we get lit like we have fun we get stoned we we do it all but like it's very genuine it's not you know it's just us like kicking back getting fucked up and talking about a show we love which is so fun that's awesome so let's talk about the people from the show that have actually i know you you downplay that a little bit but i think that's fucking cool if you're on an (laughs) hbo show and you take the time to even if you're high as a kite call into like some show that is a fan show that says a lot about your presentation and the way that you invited them in because i know Paige, me and you've had a lot of talks about our years in production and i've had that same experience that cool experience with some people that are like you know well-known like celebrities on the show that will give you notes on your screenplay but it's all about the material and how you present yourself you know so because there's a Mm -hmm. million crazies hitting them up via dms and tweeting at them so how did it feel to have there's three right at this point now. I know, right? There's... It was, yeah, Angus, we we weirdly like Insta, <laughs> what do you even call it? Like he was on Instagram live and <laughs> I can't even, once again, like I really don't even credit the podcast. Like I think I will say this though, and I will say it with like confidence. I know many of them know about our podcast. They watch right. our stories. They like stuff every now and then. Like I'm not saying they listen, but they know that we exist. 
That's like, a start. They, That's an like, amazing Sydney, start. Sweeney watches our stories all the time. Angus Cloud, who plays Fesco, he was really high on Insta Live. Oh, yeah, we got him with him. We got his attention and like talked to him for a bit. We've called Algie Smith. Yeah, same with Algie. He, he called us. High. Yeah. But once again, same thing, all social media based. Like he was doing something where if you bought like his merch, he'd give you a phone call. You know how they have that app where they can call you from like a number that's not theirs so that it's like yeah. private. And so, these were not like interviews or anything. No, they were just, no, no, like, no. Like, goofy fun moments. He laughed because he, I told him we had a podcast and I said, would you ever come on? And it was very informal, of course. And he sounded like he was tipsy. So he was like, oh, maybe, but like he he would not tell us anything about season two, which I figured, but like yeah. it was still fun. It was just funny. Yeah. And he, then, he, was, he was into it. He was like cracking up. Yeah. But yeah, just And fun. then we had our we had our interview with Clark, which we Clark were was great. What a great interview. That's so yeah. what a adorable little person. And then on top of that, like what what an amount of insight on his experience with the show as well. Yeah, he is insanely talented um someone that i'm like wow like i'm it was like an honor to interview him because it's just like even though he's like what 14 years old he's so talented and like definitely has like a bright future mm-hmm. um super well spoken very like in tune with like the arts dedicated the type of like i mean he does we talked about it in that episode but he does like everything he like dances he yeah. sings he acts he paints like, he has a pig didn't he have a pig that he loved or something yeah, like that. he had a lot he of lives, animals lives on a farm. Yeah. he's got all kinds of animals so that was really cool um but he's also like, full of life too just so excited to be well, like he's also in a show um based off stephen king's lisey's story is what it's called it's on apple tv right now mm-hmm. and cool. he's incredible in it so yeah bright future but also Alex and I were nervous as shit to interview our first little like celebrity moment. And Aww, you guys he really, killed it. like rose to the occasion though. Like if anything, he made us feel at ease. Like it was so much fun. He was just like And that's like, a, such a tough role to play. I mean, he's playing like a transgender like teen. Like that is not an easy role to play. Yeah, who is suicidal and it's rough, there's rough stuff going on in that scene. Literally too. a, su- a yeah, suicidal right. transgender teen. So yeah. like in, I, in a literal insane asylum like that's like a heavy like role to take on. Um, but so. oh. yeah if you listen to the Good interview we go more in depth but it was like alex said yeah i heard i did hear the interview um i was so excited for you both and uh continue to be excited for you both so moving on uh season two is filming right now right is that filming in new york city or is it filming in la or both all la i think la yeah, yeah. I think they might have filmed something in New York like a long time ago, like months ago. It's all LA based as far as I know though now. And I do believe they just wrapped. So that's very cool. exciting. Um, um, that's why Zendaya couldn't go to the Met Gala because they were wrapping Euphoria. <laughs> yeah, the no, Met Gala, like I think I have, I mean, being someone from New York who worked as a casting, I'm pretty sure I've heard about that before. But like, I hadn't thought about that in a while when I saw all the pictures. I was like, oh man, that, that looks like a lot of fun. Hunter was, Baker at the Met Gala. Yeah, she, I was yeah. Joking, joking with Paige that uh, taking you guys next year after I uh, star as a bodyguard in my friend's <laughs> weight. <laughs> yeah, okay, can you get a table at the Met Gala, please? Please, yeah. please, Ta- please. Table service. Um, so we're going to take our first break really quick. Perfect. Um, so what's going to happen is, uh, yeah, we'll take our first break. I'm going to do sponsors on the side. Uh, I'm going to pop out and then pop right back into the meeting. Uh, so this is just to render and I have to send it over. So uh, we'll be right back. Uh, we're with uh, Paige Blazer, Alex Miller from That's Our Euphoric Podcast. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the two uh, Euphoria specials that aired um, at the end of last year and early this year or at the end of last year. And then talk about season two and then talk about the cast and what they're up to because there's some really cool shit coming up with the cast. And uh, Sydney Sweet, I just saw that show, The White Lotus. She was so amazing in that show. Now you didn't like. I thought she was great. I thought oh, she was she super. Was Sydney is always great. I have some thoughts on that show. Well, Mike <laughs> White. Um, you know, Mike White. Uh, I have some. I have some feels on him as a writer and a creator. But um, last night, me and the kids randomly watched School of Rock, and I didn't realize Mike White played Sarah's yeah. boyfriend, the roommate yeah. in that show. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize. I didn't. Re- I didn't remember Richard Linklater directed that. I mean, that's a heavy duty. That's a star-studded production, dude. And it went to Broadway. Uh-huh. 
so good. Yeah, yeah. like ju- like justice for Ned Schneebly. He deserves a standing ovation. Oh, cool. All right, so I'm gonna pause this and then I will. Okay. Uh, I'll text you and I'll let you know when I'm back in. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll make drinks. We'll be right back. Yeah, I'm about to get one too. Okay. All right. Bye.